here is my Turbo 400 stock bell housing built by JW Transmissions here in Florida. It's fully built. The only thing I didn't have them do a couple years ago was put a Ultra Bell on. I was trying to save a few bucks. Well, now I have one and I'm going to do a video of cutting this bell housing, grinding it down with just your basic tools, no machine work, no CNC and so forth, no mill, and be able to show everybody how to do it and post it because I've been looking online and there are no videos, maybe one or two, nothing really good. So I'm not really great at videotaping. So I'm going to do what I can and edit this. And any questions, just feel free below to let me know. So from the instructions from JW, the measurements and rough cuts, as you see, for a Turbo 400, 17 and 5 eighths. And that is from the rear housing surface, which on my transmission, I actually have where it's hard to see. I have a little mark that's scribed on here. I don't know if JW had done that when I brought this transmission to them. Uh, they were going to do the Ultra Bell, but ended up I was trying to save money and I didn't do it. So that might have been their, their mark, per se. I'm not too sure. But if you take the measurement from there into the rear housing, it's, uh, you know... There. That's pretty close. And if you go by the other measurement, <clears throat> 10 inches, that is pretty close. So I'm not going to cut that backside. I'm actually going to come in here and you know, to give you a visual, I'm going to cut up in here, you know, up and around, per se, all the way around. And then when I do it with a grinder, then a sawzall, I have a sawzall, I just figure the grinder would work a little easier and then put a different wheel on there to finish it off. So we'll go from there. Okay, I started a little bit of cutting. As you can see, it's actually pretty thick and hard to cut with a grinding wheel. So I'm going to try the Sawzall right now. Maybe it'll go a little easier and let you know. But be prepared for a lot of shavings and it's thick so you'll you'll have to put some pressure in it but let the rpm cut through it okay you can see with the saws uh it's cutting it is uh relatively a little easier but you got to be very careful that you don't smack uh the pump or the shaft here and when you come around you got to be careful with your uh, fittings for your cooler and also your trans brake right there well mine's covered but I did smack it with uh, the blade didn't do anything just a little little scratch but um, got to be careful you never know I'll show you some of the sawzall cut so far like I said, definitely use the Sawzall over a grinder. It's faster, it's cleaner cut, more controllable. You wouldn't think, but it really is. And, uh, you know, I'm almost done. Just gotta cut right down here, and then, of course, just the 
the cleanup with a disc and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, there it is. It's cut off on the floor. About 20 minutes. I'd rather have more material than not enough. I gotta go and clean all that up now. All right, I brought it outside to take a little soap and water to clean off some of the shavings. Looks pretty good. The only spot that I went a little too much would be right here. And structurally, it's not an issue or anything. Uh, I've seen worse. But that little bit I'm not going to worry about. Everything else looks pretty good. Wasn't bad at all. Just keeping the shavings out of everything and cleaning it all off. I'm probably just going to touch up with a little bit of paint. And yes, my front shaft there is a little eaten up. The converter pushed against it a little when my flex plate went ahead and <clears throat> flexed because the bolts backed out hence the reason why I'm doing this I put a new uh, flex plate in there new bolts all locked tight in and decided just to do this while I'm at it and have to get a new torque converter because currently the torque converter that did that also busted the thrust bearings inside so it's garbage all right got some fresh paint on there here's the pump uh, you already took out most of the bolts you have to be careful my washers were stuck to the case and pretty much painted and they're very thin washers and you would almost not know it was a washer but they all came out i'm not going to pull the pump out to look inside and so forth i'm just leaving it like this and the kit came with new bolts washers and some o-rings which i'm going to read the instructions right now and figure that out all righty actually went back at it for a little bit of grinding now these tabs, they have to be ground down and I did not grind those originally. You have to roughly flush cut them or grind them or else the cover will not fit. Okay, finally, had to do a little bit more grinding, but I have it completely done. I had to grind a little bit more here, some on this side right here, and uh, of course these tabs I ground down, made them flush. So the cover, the bell housing, is flush to the cover. All right, another thing you have to make sure you do backside of bell housing that meets the pump you have these o-rings that have to be placed inside and it's a six bolt pump at least mine is uh, but I'm just gonna put an o-ring in every location to make the surface that much more true so we're not missing an o-ring here and you know being what ten thousandths or whatever it's uh slush all right back at it had to take it off again and get this area right here now nothing touches yeah there's a little gap but 
that's fine. The two mating surfaces are the pump and the bell housing with the six bolts. As long as they're flush, everything should be okay. So now I'm gonna go back like I had said in the previous video. I put the two bolts in to just center it and get it on there with all the o-rings i'm going to put loctite on the threads and ultra black on the washer surface right here get those in take those two out do the same to those and then torque everything down in a sequence to 20 foot pounds as the instructions say and then i'm just going to let it sit here until i get my torque converter from fti it's a custom turbocharger uh converter so we'll go from there all right i got it placed on i'm going to just take two bolts and washers just to it's hard holding the camera and doing it but you know i'm just placing it in there all right yes i did put two bolts in reason being i wanted it flush mounted because pushing the bolts through actually would pop out the o-rings on the back side the threads would catch it and they would just spit right out so what i did was i, I put two in so then i could put the other four bolts in with loctite and like i said some loctite which is like their strongest loctite red 277 and some ultra black which i'll put around the washer here just give it a uh a tight seal and then I'll take those two back out and do the same to those and we should be good I'll go around this is just rough this is that spot I showed you that I went a little too much but everywhere else it's it's not perfect but it's, it's really good the tightest spot I have, well, one of the tightest spots is right here, but I can still get my nail in there. But the other side right here, which had me concerned a second ago, is right here. That is tight. I almost want to grind a little bit more right here, but it's, it's kind of dimpled. And it's, it's thin right there. I think I'm okay. I'm might get a feeler gauge and, and see if I have any clearance in there but for the most part it looks good all right here it is all done I have all six bolts in with Loctite 277 and some silicone black silicone uh, around the washer. I just torqued them down in a sequence, um, snug, and then maybe 10 foot pounds and then 20 to finish it out. I'm gonna let it sit and dry overnight, or I should say a week because I'm waiting for my torque converter. And that's it, I'm go from there. Please like and subscribe so I can make more content.